is going on today guys welcome back back in the garage working on the 08 this should be the final tear down video and we are finally going to start rebuilding it so been over this a couple times but for those of you guys who have not seen the previous videos this video is going to kind of be devoted on taking the camshaft out obviously we've got the cylinder head off we've got a lot of accessories off but we still do not have the main uh, whatever you want to call it, the main items in front of the timing case, the timing case and everything inside of here, and exactly what we need to do to actually pull the camshaft out. So that's what we're going to be going over today in a little bit of a detail. Uh, so here's where we are starting, obviously. What we still have to do, and really where I kind of paused to kind of give you some valuable information, is this cross member. Now, I've always said I don't know everything. I've done certain things a certain way in the past, and I've kind of shown that, but... The guys at the shop told me a little bit of a different way to take this uh, front cross member apart without really cutting, welding, uh, doing any of that. So I really wanted to share that with you guys um, as we may be adopting that way to do it in the future. So this is my first time kind of doing it that way. Wanted to share that with you guys. So anyway, here's what we got. We got this engine cross member. The main reason why this has to come out, um, if you were pulling the engine, it would certainly probably help. Maybe not exactly needed. You could probably lift it up over it, but the engine staying in the truck, uh, the cam is basically right here. So to pull this out, boom, this baby's in the way. So ding -ling -ling. So we, uh, we've removed the bolts and the bracketry over here. The brackets right here is what kind of holds the, uh, the radiator and some of the other stuff in the front here. So remove that, remove the bolts top and bottom. And you can kind of see this thing is now loose and this thing will try and slide from side to side, but it will not slide far enough one way to actually get it out from the other. So what I've done in the past is I have beat this thing all the way to one side. As you can see, it starts to bend and where it starts to bend is where it stops. So I've beat it all the way to the one side, which gets one set of bolt holes completely out. Then what I've done is I've actually just cut the excess off, which leaves the second set of bolts and this little sliver here. And we just kind of run one bolt on one side. That way you can kind of jam it this way, pull it out and then slide it out. Now, the way that we are going to attempt to do it today with using this very sophisticated, highly, uh, you know, complicated tool. It looks pretty familiar, right? It looks like a, uh, a jack from underneath uh, the seat. Everyone's got one of these. You can steal it from your mom's uh, Grand Caravan, what have you, Dodge Neon, whatever your mother drives. Just go steal this. That way, when she gets a flat tire, she has no idea where it is. But anyway, what we're going to do is, and you guys saw that I took the... Um, uh, bolts. I'm trying to lay this down. So I took the bolts out right here for this front uh, front fender support. So I took these bolts out. Um, so these bolts are out. These bolts are out. What we're going to do is we are now going to wedge this in between right here and right here. And then we are actually going to, without removing anything else, and this is what I've this is what I've told. Again, this is my first time we're doing this together here taking these bolts out and opening the doors. The key part is to open the doors, obviously. Opening the doors, we're gonna spread this just a little bit further um, and we shouldn't need to take any other bolts out, shouldn't really tweak anything else as far as what I've been told. Uh, that's the way we're gonna try and do it. And it really just needs to move maybe collectively about that much and hopefully doing that, we can take that out without cutting anything. So that's what we're gonna do, hopefully this helps. Almost forgot to open the doors. Literally just told you guys to open the doors. I almost forgot to open the doors. Yahtzee! All right, so here we go. Looks like everything worked as planned, right? So, okay, so here's the modifications that you need to do. It looks like they had welded a little bit of angle iron on the end here and 
a little bit of an angle iron right here, and you're going to stick that in between here. Uh, and again, like I mentioned, I almost forgot to open the doors, which probably would not have been good, but caught it in time. Again, you want to slide this as far as you can this way when you're doing this. Start separating it. See if you can kind of see we're just basically what it's doing is moving it off of these bushings And I would probably say that again We've only moved it collectively about this much on either side once you got enough room You can basically pull it out of here start wiggling it and it will then slide Completely out just like that. Look at that uncut. Oh Yeah, that that is nice. I didn't even need to use a socket. I pretty much just did this all by hand We'll go ahead and loosen this up and then you can kind of see it'll start coming back and then I'm assuming what we'll have to do is just basically give it a little pull again I did not really forcefully do any of that it really didn't put a lot of tension on really anything I feel like that is probably the best way to go about doing that that is really really nice all right okay so next step after we go ahead and loosen this I don't want to loosen this and then have it fall kind of like how it almost just did what we'll end up doing is we're gonna go ahead and remove uh, these pulleys right here, we're going to remove the damper. We're going to actually not going to be reusing this damper. We're going to go with a much, much nicer fluid damper in the future here. Uh, go ahead and remove the, uh, the power steering pump, and then we'll be able to get to all of the bolts on the timing cover. So that's what we're going to do next. good place to stop and kind of explain a couple things here obviously front cover is now finally off the damper definitely fought me for a little bit as you guys can see there's a little bit of a uh, rust buildup inside there and you can kind of see on the uh, little little front part here of the crank there you go you can kind of see just because of the northeast weather uh, some buildup on here made getting the damper a little bit of challenging getting it off but finally finally got it got the uh, front timing cover off and obviously you can see the cp3 gear there's your cam this is your crank and obviously your oil pump gears right here so what we're going to do next is we're going to take our half inch again these are just from home depot and lowe's uh, these are half inch wooden dowels of course, that's never going to focus. But anyway, uh, let me see if I can get this to focus on the other end here. These are half inch wooden dowels, like I've said a million times. And what you need to do is you just kind of need to buzz off a little bit of the end here. Man, oh man, focus, baby. Anyway, take a little bit off of this front edge here. That way it kind of seats down into the uh, tappet on the engine. Obviously, the tappets ride on the cam. We need to stick the wooden dowels in there and lift them up. That way they are not riding on the cam. And once we lift them up, we'll kind of hold them up and then we'll be able to slide the cam out. Obviously the retainer, I think there are two 13 millimeter bolts right there. We'll undo those. And then once the tappets are up, we will be able to slide the cam out. This is very important. This is kind of like the most nerve wracking part of this whole entire deal because if you do not have them in well enough or you pull the cam out and one falls, they are going to fall into your oil pan, which then you just open up a whole can of worms. So very important to take your time, make sure you tap these wooden dowels into the tappets very, uh, you know, firmly, get them in there good. Obviously you don't wanna, you know, split the wood in half, you don't wanna cause that, but you need to make sure they're in there and that they're pulling up. And then once you're pulled up, you need to kind of squeeze them together, uh, making sure uh, that they do not fall down whatever you do. So that's the next step That's what we're gonna do and then we can get to our new camshaft all of the new parts So stay tuned We're gonna go over all of the new stuff that we're going in as soon as we get this baby out
There she is. The factory cam is out. Uh, does have some wear on it. Nothing, nothing that I would consider. I don't know, super crazy. I mean, it's got uh, it's got some miles on it. Obviously, two and a two and a quarter. But uh, yeah, factory cam is out. What we'll have to do is we'll have to run and grab the press from the shop. We have to press the uh, cam gear off. And again, if this is repetitive, for some of you guys, I get it, I've been over this, but for you guys who are still learning, wanna brush up on some stuff, uh, obviously there's some new things in here. The more I do it, the more I learn. Uh, but the cam is out. The next step will be getting the factory tappets out. And of course, we are gonna be going with everything new from our guys at Hamilton Cams. We will be replacing these, and this is what is left in the engine, and this is what rides on your cam. So uh, they are stuck in the block like this, and as the cam moves around, these go up and down, which moves your push rods. These wear with your cam. So any type of wear that you see on your cam, this identical kind of wear is going to be on this. So the thing that we want to alleviate and change is we want to change, hopefully I said that right, right? I'm trying to, anyway, we want to change these because we have a new cam. We want new uh, tappets on there. We want new on new. We do not want old on new, uh, vice versa. So that is why they always recommend changing these out when you put a new cam in. That way, if something funky is going on in here, on your cam, you don't replicate that and put that on your brand new uh, expensive part. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Now, kind of a cool thing, uh, I if you guys have watched the videos in the past, I've always used a Cummins kit, a Cummins like uh, kit to remove the tappets and put new tappets in. The putting new tappets in is a little challenging. We've done it before, uh, but I did not have the kit. I forgot to order it, but that's not gonna stop me from getting it done. So what we did is we went and got a piece of inch and a half PVC and cut the top. As you can see, it's basically a little tray. Kind of cut it a little too high. You actually wanna cut it a little bit lower just for future sake because you can kind of see a little bit, they kind of they fit in there. Obviously the Cummins part number, the tray is actually a little bit nicer, uh, but this will work. I think this will work. Obviously I've never tried it, but uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our tray right there and I'll put these down, these Hamilton beauties right here. And what I, what, where's the other piece? What we need is, and again, this is all from Lowe's and Home Depot. We got a little piece of metal, we got a little piece of rubber, and we got some string with a knot in it, and that's really all the kit is. Uh, and what is gonna happen is these are gonna squeeze down inside here. That way we can fish the new ones up in there. So I ran, ran a little test uh, before we go ahead and do this. Obviously that's not pushed all the way in, but that is what we are after. So uh, just a little rubber piece that's kind of a little cone shape. Push that in there, and hopefully that does us, hopefully that does us well. So uh, the cam that we are gonna be going back in with is of course a Hamilton unit. It's a 178 208. So uh, they made this cam. This is more of a uh, street slash towing cam. This is kind of guys not really uh, gonna be going crazy, high RPMs, anything like that. This cam is really meant for uh, towing work, a little bit quicker spool up, EGT drop, um, better fuel economy, that sort of thing. So this is not really a, maybe a max effort horsepower cam, but this is gonna work perfectly for this application, seeing that we're gonna be doing a bunch of towing. This truck is not gonna live at high RPMs. Maybe, maybe not, uh, but no, majority, for the majority, uh, this truck is going to be doing work, doing normal uh, work truck, daily driver things, and that's where this cam is kind of suited for. So if you guys are in the market, um, bigger is not always better. Uh, we've run uh, 188, 220s, and, and bigger cams from them in the past, and kind of the 05, that application, this application is a little bit different. So they say that you can pick up about two to three miles per gallon, um, Again, EGT drop, quicker spool up, the way this cam is designed, uh, it's really meant for this application. So if you guys are kind of in between on what cam you really, really want, and you really want something like a true drop in, uh, not really gonna be doing anything crazy, this would be the cam for you guys. So I've never tried one of these cams. I know I love the 188 220s in that type of application, but I'm excited to try to try this one out and kind of just, you know, the daily driver, see if we notice anything. Obviously we're changing quite a bit at the same time. So uh, what have you, anyway, let's, 
Let's get after it. Uh, we're gonna run to the shop and change out the cam gear on the new Hamilton cam. Um, as far as taking the factory stuff out, what we're gonna do is, let's see if I can do this with one hand and kind of show you guys. So obviously now that there's a tray there, nothing is really gonna fall into the engine. What's gonna happen is they're gonna fall into this tray. So we are finally home from swapping over the cam gear onto our new Hamilton 178. So some things have happened, uh, some things have changed. Want to kind of give you guys a rundown on some mistakes that we have made. So uh, I originally told you guys we were going to try and use this piece of inch and a half PVC, which is just not going to work. I tried to uh, drop one of the tappets down in it, and like I said, it's just kind of, you can kind of see how small it is. Like, it, it, this, this piece could be a little bit bigger. The actual opening diameter of this is about two inch, so a piece of two inch pipe would be much, much better, uh, which we have sitting right over here, but I have to cut it in half. So I'm not gonna go ahead and do that right now because it's gonna eat too much time up because we have other plans for this evening. That is right, we are gonna make another video for you guys, so make sure you guys stay tuned for the next one because we are gonna be finally working on the Pro Street engine. Uh, Silent Mike is over and we are going to be knocking out some work on that, giving you guys the full rundown. So I wanna try and end this video here. I was hoping to get a little bit further, but Unfortunately, that is not the case. So we have to cut our new homemade tray. Whatever you do, don't try and do it with PVC. It's just not kind of not kind of made for that. Um, so either get the Cummins kit or uh, get a piece, a bigger piece, maybe even uh, a smaller schedule. Uh, or maybe I mean I'm not going to say this can't work if you just cut it a little bit further down. Um, but we're just going to kind of change it up and make sure that we don't have any issues. So this can stay in here for now in case any of these do decide to fall. And that is going to be it. Also, uh, you can see that we have two cams here. This is the cam that we went ahead and pressed the new cam gear on. If you guys take a look at this, and maybe some of you will see this, maybe some of you will not, but I feel like it is a good topic to kind of understand. There are two different kinds of cam. You have a steel cam, and then you have a cast cam. So what came out of the truck and what will most people will put back in their engine is a cast cam. So I actually have both steel and cast. I accidentally grabbed the steel one and put the cam gear that we're gonna use, obviously, in the truck on the steel cam. That is not the cam we are gonna be using. We wanna use the cast cam. So. Obviously you guys can see, cast kind of looks a lot different than plain steel. Um, cast kind of just looks a little bumpy, a little rough. It is just what, it, it, it's cast. It's a cast material. The block is cast. Um, this is a steel cam. Now this is geared towards guys who have uh, cam bushings throughout their engine. And again, everyone will say something different a little bit, but generically, generally speaking, uh, steel cams, you need cam bushings throughout your engine. So cast cams are what are kind of like generally more common to put in this. So you have a cam bushing right here. You guys can see it. There's a cam bushing right here. And you can see it's pushed into the block. You do not have cam bushings throughout your entire engine. You have a, you have a bushing in the front and I believe a bushing in the back. All of the rest of the areas where you're riding, like right here, right here, right here, they are not riding on a bushing. So when you guys build engines and do high performance stuff, when you get built engines, you'll typically, if you're, if you're running a pretty hot engine, they will bore that out and put bushings throughout. It's a little bit of a more high performance, a little bit better thing. Um, so anyway, what I'm getting at is uh, I just wanted to give you that information and I made the mistake of putting this on the wrong cam. So anyway, guys, like I said, that's going to pretty much wrap up this video. Hopefully you guys found some informative stuff um, and we're going to jump over to the other garage and work on the Pro Street engine, which you guys are not going to want to miss. Uh, it is it is next level. It is really, really cool. I've been waiting to kind of bring this out, show you guys. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for the next video.
See, he's over there. He's over there eating peach rings. He's over there getting snacks. Actually, actually, I think what he's doing is he's bringing over the, uh, he's bringing over the new tubing notcher. We're all closed for today, sir. Alrighty guys, but that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button before you leave. Subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> not as gooder. So uh, to end this video, me and me and Michelle, Michael over here, we're looking in my engine. He's like, did you ever check and see if your engine does have a back cam bushing? So we're looking in here, and mine doesn't. But apparently some do, some don't. Does not. No, I'm saying some do, but some don't. So some engines will. Yes. Have both. This one does not.